Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, in the sports section, the vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. On iTunes, same thing. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, you have a possibly great fight. I think this fight might even be better than advertised. It's between Robert Stiglitz, right, the former super middleweight title holder, and he's fighting the former middleweight title holder, Felix Sturm, in a fight taking place in Germany. Now, if you look up the odds, depending on the casino, you're going to see this is an even money fight across the board at some places. Right? These two, according to the casinos, are evenly matched. How could I pass up a challenge like this to make a prediction? Right? We're looking for tough fights like this. Now, what the way I see this fight, and I'm just going to tell you how I see it, right? It's so dangerous that really I can't recommend that anyone other than those of you who have had car crashes, who have lost it all on some fights. Bet on this, right? Because it's really only the venture capitalist types, the gamblers who understand that they're going to be car crashes, that they're going to be days where even the best bets you've made, right? The most well-reasoned bets fail, right? It's only people who have suffered losses on bets who should even consider betting on this fight because there's way too much uncertainty. I think this fight's going to throw caution to the wind. The way I see this fight is I see it being a shootout. In other words, Felix Sturm, who has a less than 40% KO ratio, right, moving up to a division where he has no experience. Right, I believe is going to be in there trying to get a KO. Right, I believe Stiglitz, who has been fighting a very heavy handed Arthur Abraham, is going to look across the ring. He's going to see Felix Sturm. He's going to think, What is this guy doing in my weight class? Isn't this guy a middleweight? What's he doing at super middle? And I believe Stiglitz is going to throw caution to the wind and he's going to try to get a KO. The model for this fight, as I see it, is going to be the Felix Sturm versus Darren Barker fight. Where the two guys, even though they're both elite boxers, right, the two guys are going to meet each other in the middle of the ring and more leather is going to be thrown than any of us expect, right? Understand, Felix Sturm typically goes the distance in fights, right? Stiglitz just went the distance with Arthur Abraham. Why would this be a shootout? But that's the way I'm playing it. I can't even call this a recommendation. I'm just going to tell you how I'm playing it. I like the 5-1 to one on Sturm by KO. And I like the 4-1 to one on Stiglitz by KO. Now understand, these take both guys by KO bets have blown up in my face in the past. Most notably, when uh, Carl Frotch, a big puncher, faced Arthur Abraham, a big puncher, I thought someone was getting knocked out. That might have been Frotch's finest hour as a boxing technician putting on a master class in that fight. Here I don't see any master classes. Here's what I see. Felix Sturm has been fighting the wrong kind of fighter, right? Sam Solomon moves too well, moves away from him, is a ghost in the ring. Hard to catch up with him, right? Solomon has the kind of survival skills where even when he has a knee injury against Jermaine Taylor in a fight in which he can barely stand upright in the middle of the fight, he somehow makes it the distance, right? Daniel Gill. Is the kind of guy who, when he's not fighting Gennady Golovkin, 
is a ghost. He's moving around the ring. He's what I call a hoverer. Right? That's exactly the kind of fighter who would give Felix Sturm a hard time. Now Stiglitz is interesting because Stiglitz isn't like Solomon. He's not like Gil. Even though Stiglitz, in my opinion, is one of boxing's better athletes. Right? He's front foot heavy. He's even trying to come up on Arthur Abraham. Right? He's up on you. He's in your face. This is the opposite of Sam Solomon, who's kind of like, you know, using the whole ring. And you're looking around the ring trying to find him. No, this guy is right here. Right? He's trying to overwhelm you with athleticism, volume, and tenacity. Oddly enough, that's exactly what Felix Sturm wants. Because Sturm is one of the sport's best counterpunchers. Right? Sturm is the kind of guy who will stay in the pocket, waiting for openings. Right? The first round of the Barker fight, and I consider Barker to be a better technician than Stiglitz. Right? For one, Barker bends at the waist. Stiglitz is pretty upright. Right? For two, Barker is a master at going to the body. I thought the first round of the Barker fight's breathtaking because Barker comes out with an agenda of trying to work Sturm's body. I have the film of that two-round fight in my favorites folder here online. Take a look at it. Barker comes out and he's slick. Right? Barker's the kind of guy who can be outside, then he just subtly drops a shoulder and you're getting hit in the body. Right? But you'll notice that even as he hits Sturm in the body, Sturm is watching him. Sturm has his hands up. Sturm is waiting for openings. Eventually, Sturm starts throwing bombs, starts hitting Barker on the side of the head, in particular with the right hand. Right, Sturm starts opening up because the problem with fighting counters is that they use your volume against you. You're there going to town, opening up. They see it as a door opening, right? They don't want you like this. They don't want you moving around the ring like Sam Solomon. They want you right here. They want you throwing punches. They have a defensive shell. Their attitude is, hey, He'll throw, hit my elbow, I'll have a clear shot on it. I believe Felix Sturm is coming up to the 168 pound weight class to try to show us that he has power. I know that sounds ridiculous. Understand I've had nights where I've flatlined on bets. No question about it. Right? These are the kind of risks people take. But I'm looking at Sturm, I'm looking at the guys he's been fighting, these guys staying away. I look at the Barker film, the one guy who's right there trying to trade with him, post Matthew Macklin, right? And I see Sturm trying to tee off. Understand, too, the psychology of it. You're a middleweight. You now can't make middle. Keep in mind, boxing's a weight-centric sport. Right? These guys are trying to monitor their weights. Right, You have a fight, you know exactly how hard it is to lose those last few pounds because you have to make the weigh-in. Right, So Sturm is accustomed to being at 160. Now suddenly he can't really make 160 comfortably anymore. So he's at 168. I'm telling you one of two things happens. Either the guy suddenly feels sluggish He's carrying around luggage, right? He's himself plus eight pounds. Or the guy feels energized, especially older guys. Think Bernard Hopkins. Suddenly, you know what? You know, that extra steak meal that you couldn't have before when you had to make 160, you can actually eat that. That ice cream, you can actually have a serving, right? That fatigue that you felt losing those last few pounds, now you don't have to lose them. As odd as it sounds, I think Sturm sees himself as a puncher. 
I think Robert Stiglitz knows he's a puncher. That's why he's in front of Arthur Abraham. Who else would be in front of Arthur Abraham trying to hit a home run as repeatedly as Stiglitz does round after round? Folks, the reason he gets caught in the 12th round of a third fight, right, is because, you know, the guy's hanging around, right? He's not, his mindset isn't such where he's on his back foot and he's thinking, hey, man, you're not going to catch me. It's late in this fight. No, that's not who he is. So I think this is a statement fight. Don't overlook the pride of fighters. These are two guys who both believe they're the king of Germany. Right? These are two guys who really do believe that they are the top. Right? Understand, it, it takes a mindset for Stiglitz after losing to Arthur Abraham to come back and say, you know what, I'm going to fight him again. Take a look at that rematch. Right? Stiglitz loses the first fight. Take a look at who he is in the second fight. He's on his front foot. That's the mindset. Right? These guys, in my opinion, don't know how to run. Stiglitz has foot speed. You never see him running in fights. So I think what you're going to see is an old-fashioned shootout. Just like you saw in Sturm versus Darren Barker. Right? Understand, both of those guys had skills. Boxing skills. Both of those guys could have tried to prolong that fight. Neither guy did. I think this is a statement fight. I don't see either of these guys backing away like Hopkins did when he gained weight to fight Antonio Tarver. I think this is a different mindset. I think Sturm, who at times looks, you know, cute in the ring, has one of the sport's best jabs, I think Sturm privately views himself as a puncher. I think Sturm's been disappointed that he's been in the ring with ghosts, right, guys who hover and don't want to engage him. I think Sturm is chagrined by the fact that people feel, in fact, people know, let's get real, that Matthew Macklin got robbed. Right? So I'm expecting Sturm to try to meet fire with fire. I'm expecting Stiglitz to be the lead here, come in, try to hunt Sturm down. Why? Because he views himself as the bigger man. Right? I'm expecting Sturm to stay in the pocket. Right? To literally wait for counters. I'm expecting somebody in this fight to get stopped. Right? It's high risk because even the last Stiglitz Abraham fight went the distance. Right? Understood. It's high risk because Felix Sturm, when he's not fighting Darren Barker, ends up going the distance with guys like Sam Solomon multiple times. But styles make fights. Right? Both of these guys really are hunters. This is hunter versus hunter. This isn't hunter versus hunted. Right? Stiglitz has great legs. He doesn't want to use them on his back foot. Right? These guys are here to make a statement. Sturm understands. He needs to make a splash at 168. I don't see this fight being a photo finish. I see this fight being a shootout with somebody getting caught. So I'm taking both guys by KO. Just understand, though, of all the bets I make here online, or all the, all the picks I make here online, picking a guy to win by KO is by far the most dangerous. I picked Vitaly Klitschko to win by KO over Shannon Briggs. I thought Shannon Briggs was on fumes for several rounds in that fight. He was getting shellacked. But don't underestimate the heart of a lion. Some of these fighters will do whatever it takes to go the distance. Somehow Shannon Briggs was still there at the end of the 12th round. Right? One of these guys is going to get battered. Right? The question is whether the guy 
decides, okay, tonight's not my night, and steps away, like Sonny Liston, in giving up his heavyweight title years ago against Cassius Clay, right? I believe somebody gets stopped. That's how I'm betting it, and the casino's rewarding me with 5-1 to one odds and 4-1 to one odds. They're either rewarding me or suckering me into donating funds. That's how I'm playing this. Let me know how you're playing this because this is a fight with no favorite. Right? Leave your comments for us all here in the comment section to this video. I'm just here to tell you. A fight like this in Germany is going to be beyond electric. People don't know what to expect. It's in fights like this. Think Leonard Hearns, one, where boxers show up and they want to prove something to all of us. They don't show up thinking, hey, I'm going to win a beauty pageant here. No, no. They think, you know, they show up saying, okay, this is the moment I'm here to make a statement. One of these guys is going to make a statement. I believe the other guy is going to be knocked out. That's how I see it. Let's hear how you see it. Thanks for stopping by.